hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. <laughs> no problem. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mate. The bomber tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big P here, and still the voice of hardcore boxing. I think we'll ring Dale Nichols up, at Dale the Great X on Twitter. See what he's got to say for himself. Hello. How are you doing Dale? I'm good, thank you mate, yeah. I'm alright, I'm plodding on. Uh, I've just uh, come back from Leeds, I thought I'd uh, get you on for Balls Deep, episode 4. How have you been keeping? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm all good, thanks mate. Um, I've got to say, I feel honoured and privileged to, to be asked in such good company as, uh, as the Boxing Asylum podcast members. And to be on the, to be on the list at number 4. Do you, uh, are you feeling a bit left out, Dale? Yeah, just a little bit. I'm gutted I weren't the born, really. <laughs> <laughs> what episode one? That was Smiddo, wasn't it? Your mate? He ain't my mate, is it? <laughs> I thought you were Smiddo were mates. Yeah, we are. Yeah. The voice of I mean, casual all, boxing. All, all, the way, all the way back to Hamburg in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> you were Smiddo all the way to Hamburg in a minibus. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go through these questions, Dale. Ten questions. We'll do four or five minutes on each one. Okay, then, mate. Right, most annoying pundit in boxing. I'm a sod, aren't I? That's a tough one, that is. Um, that's a tough one because... reasons um, but and I, I kind of really don't want to um, be a bit obvious here but probably the one pundit that does made in the most is probably David Hay David Hay David Hay yeah and the, and, and the reason for that being is that he will kiss anybody's arse who's willing to write him a check out he will follow any narrative that's got in front of him it's just a whole David, eh? He can't even get his words out properly. If you listen to him in between rounds, um, even during the Fury World of Two fight, at the end of the first round, he, he starts talking about Tyson Fury and he starts saying, it's the best I've ever seen Tyson Fury fight. But after three minutes against Walder, yet yeah, his entire career of about 20 odd fights before that, you know, yeah. you, 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 I, I watched back a, a ringside episode with him the other day um, when they, them two were scheduled to fight and he's saying that he's so uncoordinated and he's gangly and then all oh, so what's changed now then? Because he's still the same fighter to me. Yeah. He just, he, he just follows a script and so for that reason I would say that David Hay is probably the most annoying pundit because he's very predictable in what he's going to say as well because you just have to think that he's probably got someone in his earpiece, beat this person up, beat that person up. 
he don't really wash them then. I mean, he, he, he said stuff even against, uh, I think was it was ringside with Sonny Edwards and he, he, he was blowing smoke up his arse saying he, everyone in the divisions have already knew and all this. There's pro- probably not a world champion at Sonny Edwards' weight who have even heard of Sonny Edwards. Yeah. But he yeah. seems to be quite settled now at BT. He's got a good little uh, earner there, hasn't he? Because obviously you can't really get in at Sky full time because there's too many there and there's too many women with Bean. So there's too many noses at the trough. Yeah, so he seems to be well settled at BT, doesn't he? It's like an old boys club, isn't it? Like Match at Day. You know that pundit job at Match at Day. It's all the pals, isn't it? It's not like when football managers get jobs now. I'm not going to mention no names, but we know people who've, who've been professional footballers, and they they in they know certain people, and they always get the same. It's like a merry-go-round, isn't it? Same managers, same nine or ten managers get the same jobs, don't they? And it's like that with pundit work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. That's right there. That's right. All right, then moving on. Uh, Question two. Who's the biggest rimmer in boxing? Fighters, managers, promoters? The biggest rimmer in boxing. Biggest rimmer. It's Darren Barker. <laughs> Darren Barker. Was it a toss up between Barker and Bellew for you? Well, we're not going to get personal, I will people marry on Porky's Corner, which is a new no, one. That's not really a personal attack, is it? It's a fact. Well, this is how I look at it, right? If you put Lucas Brown in with Joshua tomorrow, Darren Barker would come out and go, he's a former world champion, I know he's 22 stone, covered in tats, 40 year old. But he's a former world champion and he can punch and he's really up for this. That's the narrative that these people will go down and that's where they let themselves down. That it, and the YouTubers who get access to them will not pull them up on this because they want access. And I can understand that. Not everybody's fortunate like me, are they? I can be critical, can't I? I can afford to be. These people can't. I see these people they don't say a word now they let themselves stand but you wouldn't get Carl Froch behaving like Barker would you? Well I think Froch even from myself actually used to come in for quite a lot of speak over the past like two to three years since he took up his punditry role but one thing I will say is that when you look at how bad the rimming has got how much following the script has become Frotch now probably stands alone as one of the more honest guys. I yeah. Mean, we always sort of put Paul and Alan Nagy on this pedestal, don't we, of that he seems to be the guy that won't sit there and listen to the, the sky crap and, yeah. you know, the spinning line after line off about the home fighter. Um, and that's kind of why you don't see him on Sky anymore and he's, he's over at BT now, isn't he, Paul? Eh? Yeah. Um, but Carl now is probably the one guy at Sky that, other than probably Andy Lee as well, that will at least try and give an impartial view on fights. Yeah, I agree with that. All right then, moving on to question three. Do you rate Joe Gallagher as a trainer? And does he leave fighters in there too long when they've took a lot of punishment? Well, you definitely say on his last show with Scott Quick that he certainly does leave his fighters in there too long. I mean, you could say at the end of the day, the guys train multiple world champions by hook or by crook, no matter how they've got the world title belts. It's just the, the name of the game now. You know, but and he's been a Ring Magazine trainer of the year. But ultimately, as a hardcore fan, I'm going to look at him and I'm going to ask one question. How many elite level wins has he got 
on his record as a trainer. Joe Gallagher. Well, let's have a look at how many elite wins he's got. George Groves for Callum elite. Smith. No, not, that's not an elite win. Okay. Are you saying Groves were had miles on clock and he were all damaged and broken up? Elite, elite level has to be the best in your weight class. And we can say that, okay, if we, if we agree that Callum Smith may or may not be number one, well, then he has to be the number two in the weight class. George Groves won a world title in his fourth attempt. He was over the hill. He'd been beat twice or three times already. He, he, he'd just gone life and death with Eubank, which we can say, yeah, he weren't life or death because it was George Groves' masterclass. But George Groves still let, left that ring with one arm and a busted nose and concussion after the fight. So he may have won clearly on the scorecards, but that put plenty of miles on the clock that night. What, he you mean the frog fight? Back. He was rushed back. This was after the Eubank fight. Then he was rushed back so that they could right. get the big purse in Saudi Arabia only, uh, was it seven months later, when really he needed 12 months to recover. Yeah. And then Callum Smith went in there and really it was three rounds apiece up until the stoppage. Yeah. So it wasn't a convincing way, you know, he caught, he caught Grove with a great shot and he put him away. But up until that point, it, the fight was on a knife edge. It wasn't like Callum Smith had gone on top of him and bullied him for six, seven rounds before he stopped him. It was three rounds apiece, probably maybe even four two to Groves. And Smith caught him. Do you think that uh, Grove's shoulder caught up with him? Most definitely. Most definitely. That's that's why he didn't retire. He retired after the fight because Groves was still a big name at that point. He could have he could have milked another a, a rematch with De Gale and, and and they could have had one final payday there because De Gale still milked it for a, a pay per view with Eubank, didn't he? In, in the February after, um, in February 2019. So that was only like four months after that. De, Girl at that point was also shot, but they could have milked another pay per view out of it. So, if Groves weren't shot to absolute pieces and didn't have one arm left, he would have got another one, one more fight, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, so other than Groves, who's the elite wins on Joe Gallagher's CV as a trainer? Has Beefy got an elite win? Beefy's only fought one elite level opponent, and that was Canelo. Has Scott Quigg got an elite win? Scott Quigg's best win's Kiko Martinez, who had already lost about five times at that point as well. So who's Scott Quigg's best he's been in with Frampton? Yeah, and he lost. And he were elite, one in Frampton. Yeah, at that, 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 that time, well, yeah. he at least went on to become elite within his next couple of fights when he beat Leo Santa Cruz. So you, you, you would say that is an elite opponent on his resume. So going through Joe Gallagher's CV, this is a former ring trainer of the year. Going through Joe Gallagher's CV, we don't we don't see one elite win on his CV. All right, then who's his top five wins then? Groves, uh, Kiko Martinez. What about Crawler? Has he got an elite win? Crawler's best win was probably Barroso, but he, he, he proved to be a one-trick pony as well, didn't he? Well, wasn't he upgraded to champion? Who, uh, Crawler? No, Cor Barroso. Were he upgraded to that belt? No, he was, an, he was WBA interim champion, weren't he? Um, so he wasn't even a world champion? Because the, the, the plan was they, the, the, they made Kevin Mitchell versus Barroso. Barroso was a bit of an unknown, wasn't he? Um, I'm sure that was on a Joshua undercard in Mitchell's last fight. And the plan was for Mitchell to fight Barroso for the mandatory position. And they obviously expected Mitchell to win. And they could have put Mitchell Crawler together for the, for the world title. And then Barroso upset him, didn't he? And he beat Mitchell, knocked him out. And then Crawler basically went in there for six, seven rounds, bit down on the gum shield, and then put him away. So basically then... Joe Gallagher out of Crawler, Beefy Smith, Quig and Callum Smith, his four world champions, none of them have got an elite win. None of them. So 
So what is going on then? Why why are we hearing all this and that? But does he just want to get these guys up to an elite fight to get paid, like Beefy Canelo and Quig Frampton and Callum Smith against Damage Groves and Crawler oh, against oh. Crawler? Who did Crawler fight? Crawler Linares twice and Lomachenko. I mean. So Crawler's not got an elite win. None of them have got an elite win. No, none of them. Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. So how, so basically, Joe Gallagher ruined a generation of fighters then, didn't he? By being a manager and a trainer. Oh, they could have gone on to do better things under, under different trainers, in my opinion. Yeah. Is he going to ruin Callum, Callum Johnson? Because I think he's the best kid he's got, me, you know. I think he's really, really good in. I wouldn't say he's the best. <laughs> Alright, who's the best guy he's got then, him at the moment? It's Callum Smith. Yeah, Callum Smith, but would you put Callum Smith against Callum Johnson? Well, we know he won't step Callum Smith up in weight. We know he won't. Because I think Callum Johnson probably beats Callum Smith. At least he got stuck in there against Viterbi, didn't he? If you take Callum Smith up another seven pounds, that chin will be exposed. Yeah. So moving on then, so Joe Gallagher's not got an elite win and 27 years of training. Right, okay. Right, maybe you should do something else, Joe. The job's back at here in Eastwood, Joe, at uh, Aldi. Right. Was Tommy Coyle overrated? And bearing in mind, is is the Coyle f family are friends with one of my close pals? But was Tommy Coyle overrated? But just speak truthfully, Dale. Okay, so I have opinions, and I think that he's a smashing block. The things he does for his local community are unparalleled within the game today. He's a fantastic bloke. He's a great ambassador for his community. Oh. But let's but let's draw the line there. Tell me, yeah. This, this this guy, he's very desperate for recognition on Twitter. Um, his record is piss poor. His best win is over a shot to pieces. Michael can see this who they shipped over on four weeks' notice after a two-year layoff. Or Masha Dodd. So who's Tommy Coyle's best win then, Dale? Out of those two, you'd probably say Katsibis. But four weeks notice after a two year on a two year layoff. Drain to make weight. Yeah. And he just come charging forward and just clipped him on the temple, didn't they? But other than that it's Masha Dodd for the Commonwealth title. But he was just ringed and ringed and ringed Eddie to continuously get shots and chances at belts. But he now, you know, but he won an IBF international title against Bruce Wayne, who, who was an absolute nobody. It was a thrilling fight, but he went life and death with him. And then. Unfortunately, all our lines are currently busy. If you would like to leave your name and telephone number, we'll get back to you as soon as you can. Hello, we're not work fucking phone. Hang on. I'm no good with all, I'm on me computers or phones. <laughs> right, go on, you were saying. So, it's, it, you know, let's move away from the nice guy side of things. Judging on his resume. He has no good wins, does he really? It, it's it's Masha Dodd or Michael Cassidy, these are his two best wins. Yeah. Yeah, er... Uh, so basically, Tommy Coyle's CV ain't as good as what he's making out on Twitter, is, is that what you're saying, Dale? I like Tommy Coyle, mate, I think he's funny. He's doing videos on saying stuff like, um, set traps and, um, you know, to, 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 to catch 
your opponent and stuff like that, but I don't know mate I don't know but uh, he's done well hasn't he Tommy Coyle though to say that his CV is not as good as what you reckon he's done well for his son hasn't he financially yeah he's done alright for his son Tommy from what I've heard isn't that what it's all about Alright then. Well we it wish depends who you are, doesn't it, really? um... We wish Tommy all the best, but I dare say Tommy Coyle will be coming back in a couple of years because they all make comebacks, don't they? Well he's desperate for that one last dance, isn't he? I mean he's selling tickets at what is it, is it something like five hundred quid a table? Uh, and he's invited every man and his dog to it to try and sell tickets and it's just, it's just, to what? It's just reeks of desperation, doesn't it, really? It just to reeks of it. Tickets to what? He's, he's, he's retired, isn't he? Party, isn't he? He's, he's having a retirement party. Well, he needs it from all the wars he's had, doesn't he? I mean, it's a... Doesn't make a great fighter, does it? No, I know, well, Cat Seedies were exciting, weren't it? But we're not going to say we're great, are we? Interim money, but he should have been upgraded to uh, WBO champ status, could he? But Marquez were messing him about, wasn't he? Yeah, we yeah. all right, then we're well, moving on. Will Femi beat Tyson Fury? You're asking my opinion on who would win the fight, or yeah. if Joshua could win it. Could Joshua beat Tyson Fury? You reckon? It's a 50 50 fight. I mean, okay, perhaps 50 50 might be a side stretch, probably 60 40 in Tyson's favour. But it's a, it's a fantastic side. Joshua can certainly win it. He can certainly win that fight. He's very, you know, he, he's underrated as a boxer. And let's not forget, he is an Olympic gold medalist. Where the people say, you know, he had three gifts. He's still won an Olympic gold last night. He's still a decorated amateur. He has got good boxing fundamentals. He can box on the back foot. He has got power. Tyson obviously has proof that he's got a decent chin, but he's also proved that he can hit the deck. You would favour Fury to win the fight, but Joshua doesn't seem to... I mean, you, you think back to even when he fought Vladimir, and I think at the time of the stoppage, majority of people had Vladimir at least two rounds up but on the official scorecards two of the, two of the three cards actually had Joshua up so if, if the fight went the distance what's the say that Tyson would even get the nod yeah. unless it was an absolute masterclass if it goes to points they're not going to give it Tyson Fury on a, Josh, on a Joshua show are they You know why that is? Because Tyson fights loose. What he does, he fights loose and he's always hitting the target and moving, stick and move like Ali and they wrap the points up. And this is why it's very hard to beat him. He's very hard to hit. And, and if you can't hit somebody and they're peppering your all time and putting points in back, hit and don't get hit. That's the name of the game. Forget the fact that he doesn't look like Joshua stripped off to his underpants. Forget all that. You've just seen what he's done to Wilder. You can't put muscles on chins. Bodybuilders and muscles don't win fights, do they? Like heart well, and technique. I mean, I think, mm. did we go back a couple of years, um, Joshua actually used to criticise Fury, didn't he? I think it was after he beat Vladimir by saying, you know, I, I, I'm a heavyweight boxer, I want to go in there and knock them out. And, yeah. Um, I'm not going to go in there and box my way to a point to win. That's not how champion. Role. Yeah. Yet, if you look at their last two performances, the roles are reversed slightly out of the ring. Yeah. What they're both known from doing. I mean, Tyson's never been known for, you know, a pressing, come forward, 
and stick it on and style. Um, and Joshua has never really been much of a, a you know, a, a pop shot or back foot fighter. Yeah, yeah. You mean when he fought Ruiz? You mean when he fought Ruiz? The uh, Joshua went on back foot, didn't he? When he fought Ruiz. So you're saying it's a 50-50? I'm saying that I'll probably edge more towards Tyson Fury, but it's a fight that Joshua can certainly win, yeah. Alright. Uh, question six. Is old fish eyes finished if Dubois goes to Eddie Earn? I wouldn't say he's finished. He's probably in his best position that he's actually been in for ten years because he's actually got the richest broadcaster in Britain behind him now. And there's no threat to, to, to them sort of pulling the plug. It, you know, it's not like Matt Drew, who are kind of edging more towards the MTK thing, the zone, who are attempting to get a foothold in the UK market. So you would suspect that maybe Matt Drew may move over to the zone to keep that relationship sweet across the pond. We all know that the biggest open secret in boxing is that MTK are getting sky dates. Um, and whereas on the BT side of things, Queensbury are sole, sole promoters, aren't they? So he, he has got eye for talent. He seems to be picking up solid enough names. They don't, you know, he's not expanding over to the UK, uh, over to the US and neglecting his UK shows, is he? Unlike another promoter. Mm. So I think the bar, of course, is. As, a, as an exclusive fighter, he's probably his biggest prospect just because he's got everything, hasn't he? You know, he, he, he's got the punch power, he's got the excitement, he, he, he's starting to get a bit of the profile. I think he's unlucky that the Joyce fight obviously hasn't happened because I think he would have blew Joyce away and that would have really catapulted him up into like the upper, upper European levels because that was actually for the European title, wasn't it? So he would then be a British Commonwealth European champion banging on the door for a world title shot. Um, so yeah, I think I wouldn't say he'd be finished if he lost Dubois. I can't even see him losing Dubois anyway. I don't know why Dubois would want to go anywhere else. He's well settled at BT. He seems to be the face of the of the promotion going forward. Um, you're more likely to see Yard jump ship than you are Dubois. Right. Um, but no, certainly not finished at all. He always seems to find a way back, doesn't he, Frank? You know, even through the Box Nation era, he seems to somehow he's found his way through all that. And he's come out, you know, he's got, I don't even know what the saying is. Is he filling a pile of shit and come out stinking of roses? Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, Frank. Uh He's had some bad luck, Frank, over the years, but he always comes out of it, doesn't he? He's like a... Uh, he could survive a nuclear blast, couldn't he, Frank Warren? He's got the passion for the game. He might not be everybody's cup of tea, but, he, he, you know, he, he's, he's a boxing fan through and through, and, he, you know, he's not in it for the money as such as some other people. He does put good competitive cards on, which... Full can't wait. It, but, you know, this is what I like about BT is that they've no problem sticking on six or seven s small all shows on a year of you know even if it's just your call of, of pretty much unknown and unheard of fighters. But if it's going to produce good content and good fights, they don't mind sticking it on. And that's that's really all we can ask for as fans: is good competitive fights. Yeah. All right. Uh... Carpenters over or Slovakian pimps over. 
you know, we might actually see some good domestic 50-50 fights. What next for Dave Allen? Is he training with Jamie Moore now, is he? Is he what? Is he training with Jamie Moore now? Yeah. Well, let's hope that he's actually got his head screwed on. I've called for Dave Allen to retire numerous times. He's a young man who's been exploited. Um, you know, he's obviously got a bit of a, a following, whether you like the guy or not. He, do, he does obviously do decent numbers through multiple platforms, IFL, etc, etc. Um, Twitter, he seems to have a good following. Um, yeah, go on. Hey. Seriously, an attempt to win a belt of some sort, then good luck to him. Um, he's, he's probably with the best possible guy in Jamie Moore, because I do rate him as a trainer, and I loved him as a fighter as well. I, I, I believe him to be the best fighter, not to win a world title. He never fought for one. Years in Britain. Um, but yeah, let, let's, let, let's just time will tell, I suppose, really, with Dave Allen. Yeah, all right. Uh, what next for Luke Campbell? Well, he's been quite unlucky, hasn't he, on the world title scene where he's fought Lenares and Lomachenko both for world titles and he's been soundly beaten on both occasions but not disgraced himself. Um, I think he was begging for this vacant belt shot against Fortuna, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, that fell through now because the reinstated Haney as the champion, although he's a two-time champion, but he's never actually fought for a world title. Is that correct? Yeah. Who's Luke Campbell's best win? Luke Campbell's best win? Oh, it'd probably be Mendy rematch, wouldn't it, really? Because obviously, I think he boxed really well in that rematch. Boxed smart, boxed clever, and I think at the time, the, the WBC title... Um, I can't think who was holding it at the time. I think it was Mikey Garcia, weren't it? And he also held the IBF and he vacated both. Um, but he vacated the WBC a lot later, didn't he? Because I think Commie fought for the uh, IBF, didn't he? Yeah. And um, so that freed up the WBC. And Campbell was supposed to get shot at a, a vacant WBC. And then uh, the WBC, in true, true to style um, called him Lomachenko as the uh, mandatory even though he got other belts so he fell a little bit unlucky there um, and then obviously he was supposed to fight for the Viking belt again but due to obviously everything that's going on there that fight's never happened so he's going to have to wait his chance again there um, I, I think he's certainly good enough to win a world title but He's at a very difficult weight to win one, and time's running out really as well, because he's, he's not as young as people think, is he Luke Campbell? No. 33. So you'd probably say he's got around about the four to five fights left, Mark, wouldn't you? If that. If that, yeah, exactly, if that. So, uh, a natural talent, I mean, he, he, he's, a, he's a fantastic fighter, but... I've had my criticisms about, about Luke Campbell all throughout his career. The way he's been promoted, he should have been a star. He turned over with Joshua through the 2012 hype and euphoria. He should have been a big name in this country. He's dipped in and out of sport for personal reasons, which obviously we're not going to discuss on this channel. Um, if he doesn't win a world title, he will certainly go down as a wasted talent. So Eddie Hearn's got a gold medal Olympian and he can't deliver him a world title. Well, again, I think we, we, how many times has, has Luke Campbell actually topped the bill as an A-side fighter? Not many. Tommy Coyle. Tommy Coyle. I think he did a couple of other whole shows against a couple of a couple of nobodies. I think, or nothing, nothing high profile. I think, you know, obviously he's had his big pay-per-view date against Lomachenko, but he was a clear big side in that. And he probably didn't pick up much of a purse because they probably paid Lomachenko around about 80 to 85% of that purse. Yeah. 
Mm. All right, then moving on. Uh, we've got two questions left. Do you rate Katie Taylor? No, three questions left. Do you rate Katie Taylor? I do struggle a little bit with women's boxing, I will say that much. My knowledge on it is very, very limited. Yeah. Um, if ever I'm watching a Sky show and a woman's fight comes on without sounding too bad, that's my time to go and get a beer and chill out, <laughs> ready for the next fight, and that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, she, you know, I think the person who fought, she got beat personally. Um, the lines, the lot, they're obviously sort of gearing up for her to get in. She'll bash it up, Cameron, Chantel Cameron, I think. I think, I think she's had a long, decorated career, and uh, slowly but surely, these fighters, no matter how good you are, father time always does catch up with you. And I think at some point, she's going to come unstuck, and she will get beat, because she'll just be a, a sharp fighter. Because she does take punishment. You never see her come out of a ring without a black eye. Yeah. All right then. So soon or later she will get beat. The bubble will get the the bubble will burst. But she has paved the way for a generation of female fighters, and that has to be respected. Does D Daniel Dubois beat Joe Joyce, Caballero, and Dillian White? You don't think Dubois beats Dillian White, no? No, 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 no. I think, I certainly think he would beat Joe Joyce. I, I couldn't see that going six, seven rounds. I think he'd dispose of him pretty much as he did with Nathan Gorman. I, I, don't, I don't rate Joyce all, all that high then. Uh, Caboyal. Uh, who's he beat? He's always his best win. Uh, I know obviously we're coming on to Dillian White next, but I think Dillian White would have, would, uh, would have too much experience for Dubois at this point in time. But I think if you used to ask me again in 18 months, I'd probably be telling you that Dubois will, would, would win. Um, but Dillian White, uh, just to touch on it quickly, I think that um, obviously the milk in him dry at the moment because he's, he's somehow established himself as a pay per view fighter. So until he gets beat at world for for his world title shot, which he will finally get at some point, he's just going to be having easy tickovers, and then he'll have a big cash out in a world title fight to get beat, and you probably won't see him again because he's earned all of his money now, hasn't he? He's earning his money now, ready for his big cash out. Well, to be honest with you, mate, I think Dillian White's over ill now. I think he's on slide. You're only as good I'm as your last fight. Yeah, that's what I'm Dillian White, Dillian White, so it missed the boat as regards world title fight. Do you think he might miss it? You know, you think he might have gambled that too many? Do you think he might have gambled too many times, having 
uh, you know, an interim fight before the main big world title fight? Do you think he might just it might ju he might have just miss the boat? I think, I think to, me, to say he's missed the boat would, would suggest that at some point in time he was capable of beating Joshua Fury or Wilder. Mm. I don't think that's ever been the case, and that's just my opinion. I don't think that at any point during the past two two years since this big charade's been going that Dylan Moore could have beaten any of those three. So he certainly hasn't missed the boat in terms of winning his title. Um, has he missed the boat commercially at the, and, and striking while the iron's hot? Well, no. he's still getting pay-per-views, isn't he? And he's still crying blue murder. So blue murder about what? Either, blue murder about what? He's had plenty of opportunity. But to the casual fans, you've only got to spend half an hour on Twitter and you'll see that there's still plenty of people out there who choose not to believe this. They're all people who, who, who are employed by Macho to put stuff on Twitter. That's all it is. To, to flood the market with fake news, to say Dillian White should get a shot. These people are on minimum wage in an office, mate. This is what's going on. They're not going to tell us that, but this is what's going on. To put it out there that Dillian White's been badly done to, he's had opportunities to fight eliminators, Ortiz, could have fought Wilder for the belt, Pulef, they went for the purse bid, didn't they? For Pulef, lost the purse bid, he didn't go to Bulgaria to fight, did he? See what I mean? So, he's had opportunities. You know where, you, you know where, sorry. Do you know the situation Paul has in now? He's got the Joshua fight, and he's in the driving seat. Dillian White could have been in that position 18 months ago. He would have had to wait it out. But he's thinking, no, I'll get Wilder. Sorry, I'll get Fury next next summer. But it's still another year, isn't it? He could have been in the position Paul has in now. But he chose not to fight in Bulgaria because it's not home advantage. And he was thinking, if he goes 12 rounds, I could get jobbed. Which is a business decision, but don't complain to fans about your poorly done to when you've not opportunities back. That's my opinion. I'm very outspoken on it. Dillian White don't like it. Pick up the phone. The eliminators, I can forgive. I can forgive to an extent the eliminators. All the Ortiz, Pittance, who's the bogeyman of the division at that time. You Did Ortez beat Dillian White if they fought when they should have done? Dale. Dale. What I was saying, yeah, I agree with that, but what I was saying, when he should have fought Lewis Ortiz, Dillian White, would Ortiz have beat him? Southpaw, two-time Olympian, interim champion, would he have beat Dillian White when they should have fought Ortiz and Dillian? Yeah, probably, yeah. 50-50 fight, in my opinion, but he didn't take the fight, did he? Didn't take it. So, I don't want to hear about belly aching when there's Ortiz, Wilder, Joshua and Pula. All opportunities to get in position or to fight for the world title. They didn't take them, but yet we have this, we have these people running 25 accounts apiece all day flooding these casuals' brains. Because that's what it is. These people's brains are being flooded. That's what narrative is being pushed. And everybody knows what's going on. We all know about bot accounts and people employed on ticket deals to put stuff out there on social media that's fake and mislead the fans. Like this stubble. Nobody mentions that now, do they? Second remark, ticket market. Because they had to go abroad, didn't they? Because it come on top with stubble for them, didn't it? So they thought, do you know what? We're not going to get no stubble money here. Let's go abroad. See where I'm coming from? Lie after lie after lie. Isn't that right, Eddie? Good evening, Eddie, as Andy Patterson says. <laughs> but it's been great to have you on, Dale. You're a gentleman. No, I appreciate it, mate. I appreciate it. Do you not feel left out now, Dale? No, I feel like I've 
I'm, I'm back in the circle of trust now. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like Dennis. The trust. <laughs> you sound like Dennis, he comes out with all that. <laughs> <laughs> I just say so. Oh, you're in my circle, Dennis. Go on, jog on. I don't want to be in your circle, Dennis. You're in my, you're with me now. I've met Dennis Relevant, Anna, lately. Because who knew Dennis before I got my channel? He was a complete unknown, weren't he? Yeah, he was a complete unknown. Print shows on in Vegas and that. <laughs> right. All right, then, well, nice to speak to you. I'm now going to study how to work phones and answering machines and stuff like that because I ain't got a clue. Probably because I don't want to learn. So thanks for coming on, Dale. You've been a great guest and uh, all the best to you and your lovely missus. All right? How's your dog doing? All right? Shout out to uh, Ledger Frames, Coningsborough. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Ledger Frames at Coningsborough. Have you got my mum's door yet? My mum's... Uh, what do they call it? Composite door. So that I got her for her uh, 50th anniversary. Still waiting. Well, everywhere's shut in it, all manufacturers. So shout out Ledger Frames at Cunningsborough. All right, then, mate. Well, listen, you take care. And I'll speak to you soon, Dale. Cheers. Bye bye. -bye. That was Dale Nichols. Uh, as you could tell from his accent. He's a woo 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 wolf fan! Woo woo wildebeest! Steve Bull and Andy Much! Do you remember when Steve Bull and Andy Much played up front for Wolves? They were the boys, weren't they? So that's it for today. I'm going to do inserts now. I've wrote them all down in the middle. Stick a few photos in. And then I press a button and get my man to jazz it up. So peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Shout out AJ Hobson. How are you doing, AJ? Innovation. Peace out. You like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.